Hey everybody, welcome to Grim's Forge Gaming. Today we're going to give you an update to our Stamina DK Ghost of Sparta. Yeah, this is Kratos, younger Kratos, and we are running a very non-meta dual wield, dual wield. Uh, hybridization is in full effect, so we're gonna we have changed a couple things with the build, and it's working out really well. So if you have uh, played with me before on Kratos or seen any of my videos, normally um, Kratos fights really well outnumbered. Okay, in those one uh, vx or you know small group versus large group he, he excels there he can also do really well in 1v1s and in battlegrounds as well now um, it used to be where he was tanky and I really had to kind of work on somebody to kill them but we would kill them because we were tanky now we're tanky and we can kill people so uh, there that is anyways um, this build is perfect for no CP and it works it, it's super strong in no CP and it's very strong in CP so you can take this in both places works out great okay and then we're gonna give you a, a small change that you can make if you want to run CP on this um, and lean more into the damage okay let's jump into it right now we're running ring of the wild hunt it gives you 15 percent additional movement speed out of combat and 45 percent movement speed while uh, out of combat and 15% while in movement speed is probably one of the most underrated uh, damage mitigations in the game okay um, sometimes you could just be faster than the other people you can pull away from them or you can be faster than them and uh, get yourself out of their hitbox right so uh, wild hunt is where it's at for me just to outmaneuver large groups you could put mark in here you could put death dealer here you could put torque here you could run gaze of Sithis. Run whatever mythic you want. Uh, Wild Hunt seems to work great for me. Okay. The first five piece that we are running is going to be Shackle Breaker. Especially during this hybridization period, we're going to need max stam and max mag, some weapon and spell damage, and recovery. So Shackle Breaker's worked out great. It's been a staple for Ghost of Sparta uh, Kratos for a long time, and it works out really well. The next set that I paired it with is Champion of the Hist. Champion of the Hist is weapon and spell damage, max stam, max stam, and max health, and then you gain minor heroism at all times while in combat combat generating one ultimate every one and a half seconds so I've been running around in Cyrodiil a lot lately and uh, you know how hard it is to get out of combat while in Cyrodiil and so you basically with this armor set you just see your um, ultimate ticking up right and so that works out really well pretty simple setup five piece shackle breaker five piece champion of the hist and I am running seven heavy okay now I'm not running a front bar back bar setup on this and so a lot of people uh, if you were running a front bar back bar setup on this you could run a mythic and a two piece monster I'm not doing that on this I want both of these five pieces active at all times and so there that is but if you were going to run a front bar back bar setup you could run two piece monster and probably uh, Belors would be the best two piece monster to run with um, however we're just running with a one piece storm fist uh, just for that stamina recovery you can make this pen you could make this weapon and spell damage you can make this max stats like this is flexible make it whatever you want um, I did want to get my health a little higher because I was running in CP scenarios and there's a lot of really heavy damage stuff right not only does everyone have access to their champion points but they also have access to like uh, calorians and things like that that are very bursty and so we've got builds that are you know coming out of stealth with 10k weapon damage so anyways um, I wanted to put max health as my enchant for my helm and max health for my enchant on my armor piece and then the rest you'll see is the prismatic enchant also we're running in pen on everything uh, that seems to work out really well on our jewelry we're, we are running infused with weapon damage now here's something I changed up a little bit um, we went to swords on our back bar and we went nern honed um, sharpens really not doing anything for me on the back bar and maybe I make that defending might be a good play but 
Nern honed, I wanted to drive my weapon damage as high as I could on my back bar because that's where my heals are at and that seemed to be actually working really well. Also we're at like 23-24% crit so I started seeing more crit heals and so this was a change that I made as opposed to running double defending and kind of tanking down on my back bar and having lower overall heals and so this ended up making I, I just really like this change it's worked out really well and you can see that we're running two mauls on the front nern honed and sharpened that's the best way to do that don't run nern honed nern honed nern honed sharpened ends up being the most damage output i am running a weapon damage glyph here and then uh, frost right there you could also run shock on this one if you don't want to run the weapon damage and that'll apply minor concussed and so we're apply we you in that moment you'd be applying minor concussed and minor chill um, with frost damage so or minor maim sorry um, so there that is now if you want to lean into the damage on this I would get rid of one of these sets okay you could run either one of these sets and just pair it with plague break right and I would run plague break plague break weapons and plague break uh, jewelry and then like one belt for plague break which will give you medium we are currently seven heavy on this um so i don't have any uh passives coming in for medium armor passive but you would gain that you could also run an even squishier medium armor setup and run plague plague break on these and run heavy on the rest and uh you could go that pretty much any mixture that you want seven heavy feels really good for me my primary goal on this build is to be a frontliner dive in take all the damage take all the ultimates and um you know now we're able to put together a lot of damage ourselves and actually get people out of there too so it's great but uh anyways plague break we've talked about how broken that set is and until zoss does something with it plague break is the absolute go-to on a lot of builds so if you want to increase your kill potential and you are fighting outnumbered regularly now if you're just fighting solo plague break is okay uh, the dot damage from it and the little bitty explosion but if you're fighting outnumbered it's extremely dangerous here's why number one plague break applies a status effect okay so if you are using force pulse on the destro staff you're going to get that last paragraph there for that additional damage on two separate targets um, that's nice plague break applies a dot it, um, it can be, be increased um, dot pressure on a target single target or multiple people plague break is applied to multiple people by running spin to win plague break can kill friendlies so if i put plague break on people and their healer doesn't know any better and he cleanses it and he kills the group or where a templar in the group drops a purge or a cleanse and wipes his own group so not only do i not have to kill them they can kill themselves plague break also can be applied to npcs so if i'm taking a resource and i have plague break on all the guards and a b group of people jump on me and try and kill me and i kill the guards and then the guards explode and start a chain reaction killing everybody so um plague break operates differently than vicious death in the fact that with vicious death you need to kill them plague break anyone can kill them even their own teammates and they'll blow up and it starts a terrible chain reaction so run plague break on everything magicka and stamina if you want to be more offensive or more dangerous and you're facing outnumbered fights okay there that is my plague break is broken rant um this build's very sturdy. Um, this this build is very durable, and I like it a lot. Um, okay, that's the build. We talked about changes and two different sets there. Uh, check that out. Let's look at the abilities here real quick. I'm going to show you something. Um, this is why uh, this build became dangerous kind of overnight. I have almost a 20K tooltip on my Molten Whip, okay? And you can see... Uh, that molten whip will hit players extremely hard okay um, another thing too very quickly I'm gonna go through and just look at the tooltips on the other things you're gonna have to pause this because we got to go quick 20k 8k 14k there's a 8k dot and there's 18k dot and there's an 18k take flight okay um, looks like that even fell off there
Yeah, 18K and um, 21K on our uh, Resolving Vigor. So that works out really well. Okay, so that's the tool tips buffed up on this thing. Um, Molten Whip changed everything for the way I chop people down. Previously, I was using the little Stabby Stabby from Dual Wield. I was using Bloodthirst, and it was like continuous pressure with some heals, but it wasn't anywhere near like the burst potential that this thing has. So um, I like that a lot. Um, the way you get your three stacks is you're going to go Noxious Breath, and you're going to go Burning Embers, then you go back to Noxious Breath, and then you whip them. Okay. Um, the most common combination would be you go noxious breath then you go burning embers uh then you go noxious breath then you go burning talons then you go ferocious leap then you whip them um because you're still at full stacks and then you spin to win okay that's how that combo lines up really well also looking at this burning uh, Molten Whip ended up being a great addition to the build, and it's a magic expense, pretty low magic expense for burst damage. Love it. Uh, drives up our weapon and spell damage. Noxious, Noxious Breath is a staple for DKs right now because it applies major breach. It's got really good dot pressure, and it does uh, really good upfront damage as well, and it's a conal effect. We're running spin to win. This will apply plague break if you're running that setup on everyone that it hits, and then people start exploding and blowing up and killing everyone and everything. So it's great. Uh, we're running burning talons currently. Burning talons has a great synergy. You can see that ignite synergy unbuffed. And so if you're running with groups, hitting this. Um, also, burning talons probably has the heaviest dot on a DK. Um, probably alongside with uh, Venom Claw, right? The stamina version of this. But this is this dot pressure is only for over four seconds, so it's a lot of pressure over a really small duration, and then you get hopefully that synergy from a teammate. I did make the change when we uh, made the change from this, and hybridization came into effect. We went from Burning Talon, or Venom Claw, to Burning Embers. And now, as this thing ticks on people, I get 102% of the damage as a heal. So I now have an effective dot that also is a hot, and <laughs> that's pretty darn good. So we went from being really durable to now ex ultra durable with uh, our own hots coming in outside of our back bar. So it's crazy. I do run Ferocious Leap. Um, everybody always goes with Take Flight, but Take Flight does not cover your health with a shield after it. And if I had a dollar for every DK I've killed uh, because they were running Take Flight and they hit Take Flight in a moment where they were about to die and they didn't have the shield covering their health and therefore the HOTS didn't, you know, get them back into the fight. And so I always run Ferocious Leap for that. Uh, it does respectable damage. You saw 18K. And then uh, it gives me a big shield as well. And uh, I love it. Back bar, we are running Molten Armaments. I like Molten Armaments. However, if you do not want to run Dual Wield, Dual Wield, and you want to run Two Hander, Two Hander, and then maybe run Rally, or you could run Two Hander and run Forward Momentum to get rid of um, you know, snares and stuff like that. Snares for me aren't really a problem. I just dodge roll out of stuff for the most part. And I fight outnumbered a lot on this guy. So I don't run into a lot of problems with snares. But if you needed it, you could run forward momentum off the two-hander bar. Or you could run rally, get a burst heal, and minor endurance um, from that. And uh, major brutality and major sorcery. For me, Molten Armaments works out really well, and it lasts for 36 seconds, that's great. Also, the thing that I love about it is increases my damage and my heavy attacks by 50%. I heavy attack a lot. Uh, in between my rotation of the Noxious Breath, there's a heavy attack, and then after the Burning Embers, there's a heavy attack, and then the, you know, my whole rotation, I'm channeling heavy attacks, and the heavy attacks do respectable damage, so works well for me. Uh, Cauterize, this can be a very big heal. Um, and I like this this heal just a lot. Um, works out really well, and I can spam it if I need to try and save someone else. I've seen some 11k uh, crits on this um, on friendly targets, so this works out great. This gets up to 21, 22k on Resolving Vigor. You can run Echoing if other people in your group are running Echoing, but Resolving Vigor is where it's at for me, fighting outnumbered. There's times where I push too far into the group or... 
I'm, I've overextended or I just need mega heals to get back to my group. Um, resolving Vigor works out great. Quick Cloak, I would not trade this for anything. Quick Cloak uh, dual wield on my back bar has really helped me out a lot. It gives me major evasion, reducing my damage to area attacks by 20%. And um, that major evasion can't be taken away from me. As long as that's up, um, Nightblade Bombers or any type of area effect attack like DK take flights or anything, Plague Break Explosions, you name it, this cuts 20% right off the top. So this is actually a major component of why Kratos uh, appears to be or is so tanky. 20% damage mitigation, a lot of uh, big hitting area of effect attacks. So uh, also this does a little pulse of damage out and around me from my back bar, which applies my poisons. And so if you run the double health dot drain poisons on your back bar, you're automatically gonna, even while on your front bar, but quick cloaks running from your back bar, it'll apply those poisons. So you got dot pressure and additional health coming in from that. Would not change that. And then also you gain major expedition with this. And like we were talking with Ring of the Wild Hunt, speed is king in PVP. Get you out of a, a lot of bad situations. Speed will get you out of more bad situations than tankiness will get you out of because you still have to expend resources and take the damage. Whereas if you can be fast and just outmaneuver them and use tactics, that works out. Um, we are running volatile armor. Um, this is my armor buff. This does dot damage when I reapply it in the mix midst of enemies and also it returns magic damage to my attackers which is great so um, that works out really well something else about volatile armor too is uh, while it's active due to a passive i have 12 percent additional healing um, coming in and so just make sure your armor buffs up now something about this the visual effect has been dropping i don't know if it's since the last patch or the pre i feel like it's the one before that so I always run in PvP with all of my um, buffs showing up there. You can see them right above my health. And you can see 18, 17 seconds on my volatile armor buff. There will be times where this visual effect is not on my character, but I do a quick review here to see if I see volatile armor. And there's a lot of times it's here. It's just not here. And so you need to probably activate those abilities right now. There's a handful, shuffles another one, handful of abilities that are working that way or not working that way, whatever you want to call it. It's a feature. Um, so get your ability showing up. You can do that in settings. That way you're not um, hurting your sustain by overcasting abilities and stuff like that okay um okay let's talk about moving along here uh the last ability corrosive armor this thing is the strongest ultimate in the game hands down okay not only is it a defensive mechanism it is the strongest offensive mechanism and here's why defensively this mitigates or limits all incoming damage to no more than 3% of your max health at one given time. Okay. So if you jump into a group and they're all trying to do direct damage you down, spin to win, D swing, force pulse, whatever it is, all these crazy direct damage attacks, all that damage is limited to only 3% of your max health. Now you could still be dotted down. So if they put an immense amount of dot pressure on you, you will all that dot pressure is coming in at under 3% of your max health, you could be dotted down. Important to know. But if you understand your enemy and you are watching what type of damage is coming in and you hit corrosive, you will look like an absolute demigod on the battlefield. Number two, the uh, this does poison damage around you. A little bit of AoE poison damage, that's nice. Number three, while active, this ability and your direct damage dealt ignores enemy physical and spell resistance. This is the part that is ultra strong. Like, you think the first part's ultra strong, limiting incoming damage at 3% of your max health. The bottom part is what's uh, dangerous. So on DKs currently, you don't have, you just stack weapon damage or tank, you know, tankiness. Make sure you're durable and just focus on getting your weapon damage high enough. The reason being is um, I don't have to focus on my pen whatsoever 
at all. I, I never have to focus on my pin on a DK. I'm going to get noxious breath on them. Okay. And we're going to be at 12 to 13 K pin on targets. That's going to get it done. But the second you hit corrosive armor, watch what happens to my pen then. A hundred K pen. I don't care how tanky they are. They're at cap resistance is 33,000 armor. When you hit corrosive, everyone is taking true damage everyone so you just go into immense spin to win and if you're running a plague break and putting that on everybody and dot pressure and people start exploding and everything else so corrosive armor is absolutely the strongest ultimate in the game i have no doubt okay so whenever i can i say for that also another thing this is 200 ultimate so when you hit that um, you're going to get the battle roar passive, so you're going to get a lot of resources back, so it works out great. Okay, um, we went through the abilities, we talked about our rotation. I love this rotation, This everything about this. He's super durable, both in CP and then in no CP. He's a demigod, and uh, I really like that. Um, get all your passives. Get... Um, for me, I'm running all my dual wield and armor because I am 7 heavy. I'm running all the passives there. And um, assault, you can pick those up. I am a Nord on this. We like the max health. We like the max stam and the built-in ult gen. And we like our rugged passive for more resistances. Works out great. Also, I've never done crafting on him. But if you can, power level your alchemy. Get a medicinal use and through provisioning uh, power level that so that way you can drive up your um, duration on your foods and drinks uh, what will happen is with that and a certain CP that I'm running with which we'll go into that right now but uh, you pop a sugar skulls and it's three hour duration to start so that works out great all right let's look at CP here and we are done Green tree is preference you can run whatever you want on it uh, I've been running around with art of war in Cyrodiil lately and so mount speed has been king out there so if you need mount speed because you're spending a lot of time in Cyrodiil pick those up also pick this up steeds blessing increasing your movement speed by 20 percent out of combat and then i always run with rationer these two i always run with i only run with these if i'm going to spend time in Cyrodiil if i'm running battlegrounds or ic i don't put those points there i just put them elsewhere okay um some other things to note if you're not a vampire but you need more sneak cost reduction or if you need radius detected and then movement speed while sneaking those are probably pretty important or if you're greedy uh get these two you'll make more gold along the way or something in your treasure chest better um all right i am running untamed aggression for 150 extra weapon and spell damage i'm running wrathful strikes for 165 additional weapon and spell damage we've got an extra 20 uh, or 320 crit chance and then uh in here we are running both uh, magical and physical um, or martial and magical because we do flame damage and we do physical poison and disease and bleed damage so we, we picked up all of these okay 100 weapon spell damage 100 weapon and spell damage and then 60 percent more likelihood to apply the status effect and there's more pen there and these are just extra points if you wanted to be offensive these were the two that you would want to drop 50 in and, and slot them master at arms increase your damage done with direct damage attacks everything you do on your front bar has a direct damage component uh, on it uh, even noxious breath and burning embers the the front part of it is direct damage and then um, noxious breath and burning embers and burning talons have um, dot damage or damage over time effects so these two would be where you're at and you'd buff your total damage output by 10 percent and uh, well take those abilities that have the front up front direct damage component and the uh, dot damage component you'd be buffing that by roughly 20 percent 10 percent on the front end and 10 percent on the back end so that's a good play um, here is how we are tanky on Kratos and CP scenarios. When we dive into here, we are running Ironclad. This reduces 10% of direct damage attacks. A lot of the biggest hitting abilities in the game are considered direct damage from explosions to Nightblade Bombers to D-Swing to Execute to Blast Bones. A lot of the biggest hitting things are 
direct damage and so ironclad cuts that incoming damage by 10 percent i did pick up these things because i get an extra two percent damage reduction there to magical and two percent to physical and then uh, additional two percent healing taken and uh 10 percent uh reduced damage to npcs so if you're in cyrodiil and you're flipping towers and st or uh resources you know and the and the uh guards are kicking your butt pick this up uh, here's another way that we're very tanky reduce your damage taken by single target attacks by 10% And so we're kind of double dipping there We get 10% from ironclad and 10% from single target So the guys that are hitting you really hard with the D swings or the night blades trying to gank you from stealth They'll have a hard time doing that. That's almost 20% doesn't really work that way. It's not additive. It's multiplicative, but 20% whatever Red tree. I always run these three right up here because you're going to need some recoveries even when you're going double damage builds. Um, even if you're a night blade, you're always going to need more armor. Um, the only time I don't run this one is if I am a night blade uh, because movement speed and recoveries are more important. And then max health. Max health is pretty important. Damage is very high in the game and you got to get out of that burst potential. Um, and then so those three and then you'll dive in here here's another way that I'm very tanky and there's 20% damage mitigation when I'm dotted up with a lot of negative effects I'm a stam DK or mag DK I'm a DK it doesn't I don't know that the game is really stam or mag anymore it's you're just a Dragonite right um, that's 20% damage mitigation and the thing about this is that uh, my major evasion can never be taken away from me like if it falls off yes but major evasions 20 percent damage mitigation to area of effect attacks and this could be potentially a 20 percent right on top of duelist rebuff and ironclad and all these other things so mitigating damage for kratos and cp scenarios is pretty easy especially in the really thick fights right outnumbered um there'll be a video posted at the end of this um, of Kratos from like three weeks ago, a month ago, whatever, and you can see him fighting outnumbered. I was running the Plague Break setup and we wiped um, a lot of people. We were fighting outnumbered the whole night and it was a lot of fun. Um, so that was the more offensive version with Plague Break. That wasn't even the ultra tanky version. Um, if you are sitting on if you're not taking a lot of dot damage uh for whatever reason which most everyone is everyone's running plague break right now or should be running plague break but uh if dot pressure ever calms down i would get rid of this pain's refuge and i would probably go with strategic reserve and you know it'll put me in the two to three k health recovery when you're saving for a corrosive and that would be two to three k of health coming in every two seconds which is basically just a permanent hot right um all this stuff other stuff is um like nice obviously cutting your dodge roll cost cutting your break free cost definitely want to get those and just throw in all this other stuff as needed but the most important thing are these for me and this one here so anyways that's kratos ghost of sparta that's an update for the build shackle breaker champion the hist uh keep either one of those throw in plague break if you want to be more offensive you can throw in malakath you could run uh you could run whatever mythic you want for the most part so um you could also run two-hander on the back bar i like dual wield dual wield i play thematic builds and kratos has the blades of chaos so that's my ghost of sparta you guys be safe um take it easy